Hey, good evening, guys. Uh, I'm excited about tonight again. I am pumped. It's Wednesday night. It's Life Group. And, uh, you know, I want to thank everybody for joining with us today. You know, I know you got a busy schedule. I don't know if you're joining with us live right now or uh, if you're joining with us later on this week. But uh, you being a part of this Life Group is exciting to me. I'm so thankful that you're with us. I'm excited about the topics we're going over. You know, to me, the greatest investment I can do personally in my life is becoming more of a disciple of Jesus. And the 49 challenges or commandments Jesus gave us in his word that he gave his disciples that transformed them from ordinary men to extraordinary men, life-changing, world-changing men that fulfilled the call of God on their life is an exciting topic for me. And today we're on number four. And so uh, over the last couple of weeks, you know, we have um, went over the first three. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I get caught up in what I'm teaching. I want to make sure that you guys, you know, if you're here with us, I would love for you to let us know you're here by dropping um, your name in on the comments so we can come back and I can kind of have a discipleship tracker, know who's taking this journey with me. And uh, whether you're doing it live tonight or you're doing it live on another day or doing it just coming back and following up, please leave a comment. Say that you're here and you're going through this journey with us. And then also, you know, I would love, I go back and check our live feeds last time. Would you please leave any prayer requests in the comments below? You know, one thing I love doing is praying with our church family and with members that God has connected us with. So if you will, go back and leave any of your uh, prayer requests with us. So um, jumping right into tonight, you know, the first three that we went over, you know, it seems like just those three have been so life challenging. The first one was repentance. Jesus said repent. And that is, you know, not just being sorrowful for making a mistake or doing something wrong or sinning before the Lord. It's realizing that you made the mistake and you doing and taking an action to turn, to, to make a decision to turn away, to never be able to do that again. You know, and so we learn the importance of repentance and the journey that it takes us. You know, it starts uh, with your first repentance, then it's a progressive journey. You continue to repent before the Lord as he continues to refine us. Then secondly, we talked about um, where Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, follow me, meaning giving Jesus the Lordship. He gets to lead the direction of our lives. But then he also said that uh, we're to aggressively pursue and follow him, chase, pursue the presence and the will of God in your life. Chase him, you know, um, so let him lead and you aggressively pursue him. So that's exciting. Those are challenges one and two. Then challenging three, last week was rejoice. And Jesus is talking about when, you know, when you're persecuted, rejoice for great is your reward. Learning to rejoice at all times. Paul said rejoice at all times. And again, I say rejoice in Philippians 4.4. 4. Talking about rejoicing, being the power is it reveals transformation and it releases power out of our lives into the world that we're in. So rejoice and give God glory through everything that you're going through. And so I'm excited about tonight. Um, tonight we are jumping into the next commandment that Jesus gave, and it's actually found in Matthew 5, 14. And so uh, I want to jump in real quick right here with us. And tonight's title, I would have to say, is it's going to be, and I'm trying new technology, it's um, Shine Your Light, Matthew 5, 16, and verse uh, it's 15. And um, Matthew 5, uh, verse 16, I'm trying to learn my technology as well with us. And so what I want to do real quick is I want to read this scripture with us. Let me see if I can get it to pull up. And there we go. Let's see. All right. So if you will, let's jump right here. Matthew 5, 14 through 16, it says, you are the light of the world like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it can give light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. So number four commitment is let your light shine. You know, talking... Um, in service this morning with the group, we've uh, already went through these. You know, we started off with how he, Jesus said, you know, you are the light of the world. 
breaking it down real quick, what kind of light God has made you. You know, a lot of people don't understand, but he gave us specific direct directions or uh, descriptions of the light that he said there. He said, one, that you are the light of the world. So you're a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. You know, there are a lot of different kind of lights. You know, uh, I teach a series on different kinds of lights and one being a black light. You know, some people try to live this life that God has given us as a black light and a black light is a UV light. It's a light that lets you see what I want you to see, but it keeps things hidden in the background. And so, you know, of course, God doesn't want us to live that kind of light because that light is not the effective light that God calls us. I mean, we're not to be fake. We're not to have what we want people to see and then in the background have hidden things because what's hit kept in the dark will destroy you. The things that you allow to be hidden in your life, trying to put out one front. When I used to be a children's pastor, we used to use black light puppets. You know, and you could be standing on the stage wearing black and they could not see you because we had a ultraviolet light or a black light shining. All, all they could see is what we wanted them to see. And that is not what God's called you to because anything that's in the dark will grow. Anything kept in the dark will grow. And so God wants to shine his light into every area of your life. So if you're here tonight and you're, you know, you're saying, Craig, you know, I'm not understanding why the, the life that God has for me is not working. And uh, because your light is more than just you putting up a front. As a matter of fact, let me read a scripture with you real quick. I'm going to pull this up real fast and um, show you what kind of light Jesus actually said that we were to have. It says, we're going to jump over to John. Let me get my technology working. Jump over to John. Let's jump over to John chapter I'm sorry, that's, that went back into that. Let me go here. Oh, I like that. Okay, let's, let, we'll do Yeah, there it is. Here we go. It says, And Jesus spoke, John chapter 8, verse 12, And Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you will not have to walk in darkness, because you will have the light that leads to life. You know, a black light, a life that you know, um, keeps things hidden in the dark. That's a light that God never intended for you to live because it's just like that scripture said. It says, if you will follow me, you can live a life not in darkness. And it says this, it says, but if you'll follow me, you'll follow the light that leads you to life. A black light is not a light that excludes darkness. As a matter of fact, a black light gets comfortable with darkness being involved in the light, since, in the light uh, presentation. And so if you're here tonight and you've got sin in your life, you know, it's just one of the, that's one of the things that goes back to the very first commandment of repenting. But see, God didn't call us a black light. And then I usually teach with this little light right here. You know, um, this is a light, another light that God called. This is, all right, so in this light, I've got, it does different effects. That's a bright light. That's a dim light. I know it looks probably bright right there, but, you know, some people try to live this life that God's called them to as a dim light. And God didn't say that you're to live a dim light. In other words, you know, that Jesus is only a small part or the life that God's called you is a small part. You live all your other life. And then, you know, it's not that you have a tainted light or a, a black light, but it's just not the major part of your life. The light that God has called you to should be the very purpose of who you are. As a matter of fact, the whole reason why you're here is because the whole reason why you're at your job, the whole reason why you're in your family, the whole reason why you are who you are and you are involved in what you do is because God is always inserting light into dark places. Even in the beginning of Genesis, God said, let there be light because it said there was darkness and it covered the face of the earth. God is a light inserter. And the thing about it is he, he put you in your family. He put you at your job. He put you in your city. He put you in your church so that he could emit light into a dark situation. Because whenever light shows up in a dark place, darkness is expelled. Darkness has to flee. And so you being a dim light isn't the light that God calls you to. It has to become the main focus and the main projection of your life is the light that God's called you to be. And then some people like this light here, it goes from this light does um does dim light then it does strobe light you know strobe light is light that comes on and off and on and off and that's you living for god on sunday and you not living for god on monday or you living for god on um 
Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but Friday and Saturday night is your cheat day and you're allowed to go to the clubs or you're allowed to, that's not the kind of light, that's a hypocritical light. And that light takes all the power out of your life. A light that can be turned off is a light that God can't use. A light that can be turned off is a light that doesn't expel the darkness. As a matter of fact, it learns to cohabitate with darkness. And so one day things will be dark, one thing that a lot of it, and this is what I've learned, a strobe light, you know, if you're um, one of the effects of a strobe light, it puts everything into slow motion. You living a strobe light life puts the will of God into slow motion at your life. It keeps God from being able to bring about and do the things that he desires to do today in, for you on your behalf. Because every time the light goes off, the power leaves. So I'm here to tell you, you're not called to be a strobe light. And then there's a, on this side of this light, there is a, a but where it does a, see if I can get it going. There it is. It's a, I don't know if it shows it's a, but it's a colored light. You know, and that's a, that's a fake light or a false light. A light that doesn't really represent what it really is trying to be something else all the time. You're the greatest you you can possibly be. And you're the, the greatest success you will ever be in life is being you and being who God created you. So the light that God's made you, you need to understand God didn't make mistakes. You are perfect. He created you exactly how you weren't a mistake. I, you know, it doesn't even matter what kind of situation you came into this world as. You're not a mistake. I had a kid in my youth group years ago that, you know, his mother had told him his whole life that he was a product of a rape. And so he went through his whole life thinking that he was a mistake. Someone else had done what they did and he was the product. I want you to know something. I don't care if you, you came from a one night stand. I don't care if you came from a bad, out of result of a bad marriage. I don't care if it was a, a, a crime like the young man I'm telling you about now and you were a product of a rape. God will use any circumstance and any situation and any moment in time to insert the will of God into those situations. And you are the light of the world, the Bible says. He inserted you. So you're not a mistake. You are not an accident. You may have been unplanned by your parents, but the Bible says, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. God inserted you into that situation because he needed a light involved there to be able to disperse darkness. So let's talk about real quick how we become the light of the world. Well, it goes back to John chapter eight, where it says Jesus first said, I am the light of the world. You know, if I'm you're, if I'm here with you today and I take a flashlight and I take the batteries out of this light, then this is no longer functioning as a light. It's plastic, glass, bulbs, wires. But without the power source being on the inside of it, it is just useless. But see, you, the way you become that light is that you realize that everything you are and everything you can do comes in and from Jesus being the center of your life. When you just like putting a battery inside of a flashlight, it gives that plastic, that glass, those wires, those buttons power to do and eliminate something that it could never do on its own. You're never going to be the star that God has called you to be without having Jesus on the center of your life. You need to understand something. God didn't purpose anyone to be less than great. He purposed us all to have to be great and great in his kingdom. God has great plans for you, but it will never happen unless you understand that all of this and everything in your life is going to be powered by the relationship that you have with Jesus. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He said this. Uh, let's go back to John. I love it how it says it. It says, Jesus spoke to the people once more, said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, see, it drops right back to his commandments before. It says, if you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness. Man, I tell you, I love that principle. You won't have to walk in darkness. Your life will, will be going in a direction, not according to, not according to um, you just trying to figure out your way or, you know, you're trying to stumble around in darkness. No, it says that you won't have to walk in darkness. It says, because you will have the light that leads to life. Man, God has given you such a life that's ahead of you. But see, unless you're allowing Jesus to be the power, the center of your life, then you'll go through life just having the ability to shine as a light, but still going through it in dark, uh, going through it darkly. You'll be going through dark times and not know how to see out, or you'll be going through dark situations. And you'll, in any situation you find, you won't be what the one that God used to eliminate light. So number one, the power comes from Jesus. The way you become the light is you choose that he is your Lord 
and you're going to follow and live for him. You're going to rejoice. You're going to repent. And then it says that you won't have to walk in the darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. You know, if there's something that leads to life, then that obviously means there is a direction that you can go in that could be considered death. I want to read a scripture to you real quick. Uh, I'm going to pull this up. Let me hit here, here. And let me go here. All right. And let me go here, here. I'm going to get better at this every week. I want to pull this up full screen because he said, see, if you follow this light, if you follow me, you won't have to walk this life through darkness. And it says I will, you will walk the path to life to a life. Look what God has laid before us. Let me pull this scripture here up. It says, it says in Deuteronomy 30, this life, this path to life that he's talking about says, now listen, today I'm giving you a choice between life and death. Man, there's a choice he's given us. He's given us a choice of life to death. It says between prosperity and disaster. I love, see there, God's plan for our lives is prosperity. But if we don't choose to follow him, and walk in his light says that we can have disaster. I mean, that's a that's pretty simple, cut dry decision there. Which one do you want? Life, death, poverty, disaster? It says, and this is the way to do it. For I command you this day to love the Lord your God and keep his commandments, his decrees, and his, regu his regulations by walking in his way. If you do this, you will live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you and the land you are about to enter and occupy. That means your future is full of blessing. And it says, but if your heart turns away and you refuse to listen, and if you are drawn away to serve and worship other gods, then I warn you now that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live a long, a long good life in the land you are crossing over crossing the Jordan to occupy. I want to bring something up real quick right here. See, that scripture is amazing because, see, God's given us the choice. He says, today I give you this choice, life or death, prosperity or destruction. You get to make the choice. And if you make the choice to walk the path of life like Jesus just talked about when he's the center of your life, he's where you get your power source from. You get up in the morning knowing that you need that source in your life it's like my cell phone. When I when I don't plug my cell phone up before I use it in the day, then my cell phone ends up dying halfway through the day. But it says that if I make the choice, then what he does, he leads me into blessings. And, and in my future, there's plans of prosperity and goodness. But if I don't make it, it says this. It says that I will cross over into the land. It's, it's amazing. A lot of Christians, you know, um, don't choose to, make Jesus the very center power source of their life. And they daily go back and plug back into him so that they can have the source of power. It says you, you will enter into the promised land, but you're not going to have the life that God intended you there. That's how many, that's why we have so many broke Christians. That's why we have so many sad Christians, so many bound Christians, because they are not understanding that the power to be and do all that they are is not simply salvation. But it's them deciding daily, choosing today to plug into the power source and making your life centered around you. I go to work for Jesus. I get up and I, I go do this for Jesus. I live my day for Jesus because Jesus has to be the power source of our life. And when we allow Jesus, who is the light of the world, to be, become the power source of our world, we decide that I'm not going to go through a single day without being plugged into my power source, then what that says is this, that I will enter into the land and it will be great and blessed for me instead of just living this halfway, half-hearted Christian life. I tell you what, man, it, Jesus said it like this, it's better, it is better to be hot or to be cold than to be lukewarm because he spews lukewarm out of your mouth. He He's saying this, he's in this halfway, half-hearted, dim-lighted Christian life that people choose to live you know, it's better for them to be cold and or better for them to be hot, but not this because, see, I, you can be dim-lidded, not making Jesus the complete source of the power in your life 
the light of your world, you don't make him the light of your world, then you go through life in what could take 40, 50, 60 years for God to do something and to complete the will of God in your life. You could be hot and accomplish it in just a couple of, or a matter of time. Or Jesus says, it's actually better to be cold so that if, when you go through a hard time, you will maybe have a chance at least to get hot. So I want to challenge you today. Decide that you're not going to be any other kind of light except the light that God's called you to be. So let's talk about that light. He says, a light set on a hill. A light set on a hill, like a city set on a hill. Number one, it's a light that you know takes a stand and chooses to live a higher level of living than just a light down in the valley. So you got to choose a higher level of living. And then it says this. It would be like a light set on a hill, like a, a light, like a city set on a hill. Cities are not just one light. Cities are multiple lights put together. See, so many people try to be the light that God called them to be, but they try to do it on their own. I'm here to tell you, unless you're connected to lots of lights, you're not the light that God's called you to be. I want to share this with you right here. This is a picture. Oops, went to the wrong page. Oops, wrong page. Show you this picture right here. This is a picture of a light. I don't know if you can see it very well. That is a light from space. That's Las Vegas, the city of lights, this light, the city that never sleeps. You know, that is the um, a picture of that. And what that shows me is this. If there were just been one light there, you know, it couldn't affect things the way it does. But he says you're a light that's set on a, a city, set on a hill that cannot be hidden. And you're not going to be all that God's called you to be. It takes multiple lights connected together to be the light that God's called you to be. And I believe that's the church. God's called you to be connected into that church so real quick let's jump into the last little bit of this hopefully i've laid this out in an understanding you can catch this next part he said that you're this light you're set on a city you're a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden and then he goes down to say this let your light shine so that's really what i want to share at the end of the day is number one you got to let you got to make the choice every day to be the light that god's called you to be when you make him the center of your life he becomes the power source inside you that blows out the world to see that. And so then you become the light of your world. If Jesus is the light of your world, then you become a light in your world. What that means is it means that you become the light on your job. You become the light in your marriage. You become the light in your family. You become the light in your friends that your world is affected by you making Jesus and following Jesus and obeying his decrees and his commandments in a way that it affects the world that you live in. On your job, you just can't be a casual, saved church attender. You become a light knowing that God put you there to disperse darkness, it says, by your good deeds, by the way you act, by the way you walk, by the way you talk, has the power to disperse those things. So number one, you have to let. Let is a choice. That's not, it's not an automatic. It just because you're saved, it doesn't happen. It's a, it has to be a choice. You have to get up every day and make the choice to say, I am going to be the light that God's called me to be. I'm going to get up. I'm going to plug into the power source. I'm going to get the power of Jesus so strong on the inside of me that as I walk through my day, I will do exactly what Jesus has already taught me to. When I'm persecuted, I'll rejoice. You know, when I am, uh, when I don't know what to do, I will follow him. I will let his what he has said and the way he has said it direct the decisions that I make. I'll repent when I make mistakes and I will do that everywhere I go. I will choose. I will make a decision, you know, because it is so important that you make that decision, that you be that light. Because see, if you're not making the choice to be the light, then the fact is that you are being a part of the darkness. And the thing about it is, see, you'll try to go through life like that scripture there in Deuteronomy says, that, you know, you'll go through life and you can go into the promised land of God, but you're not going to have this good life because the truth is this. You can pick up blessings in the dark, but the chances are you picking things up in the dark. You don't know what they are. That's why Christians end up being bound and Christians end up being depressed because they are picking up things in darkness that they were never intended to pick up. You becoming the light keeps it. So the next thing it says, you know, let your, your, it's not anyone else's responsibility, but yours to reach your family. It's not anyone else's responsibility, but yours to change your job. You know, a lot of times we say, well, you know, if he would act this way or she would act this way, no, this is your responsibility for you to follow Jesus, keep his decrees, keep his commandments, and you be the one 
whose deeds change the situation. This is your responsibility. Well, Cricket, I would if she just would not. It is your, doesn't matter what anyone else does. This is your life. This is your responsibility. Let your responsibility take your call, stand up, and let your good deeds shine forth in every situation. You just determine that I'm going to be the light that God's called me to be. And the light that God's called me to be is me following Jesus and me doing what's right, doing let him be Lord, me rejoicing when um, I'm persecuted, not returning evil for evil, but choosing even above, even when I'm overlooked, even when I'm done wrong, even when I'm talked about, I'm going to, it's my responsibility, not anyone else's or circumstances, it's my job to do what's right in every situation. And you say, well, Craig, you can't do that. You can do your very best. And you get close enough to Jesus that every day you get the power to be able to do that. I'm going to forgive when someone harms me. I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to retaliate. You follow Jesus and the Bible says that leads you into life. So it says, let your, let your, all right, light is what we talked about. It's where your power comes from. It's your light. It's you connecting and following Jesus, keeping his decrees, keeping his commandment. It has the power to emit a, a force into a dark world. People start seeing they start seeing you act different. Now, see, a lot of times we like people to hear us talk different, but they have to start seeing. Light is for sight. They have to start seeing you handle situations different. They have to start seeing you talk different, walk different, act different. They have to start seeing you not respond the way other people respond. Your good deeds, it says, let your light shine before men. Let, let your good deeds be the light that shines before good men. So you start doing what is tough, what is hard, and God will start using what you're doing to transform the situation you're in. Then it says, let your light shine. What does that mean? That means that as you do those things, people start seeing the difference and God starts getting the glory. You know, when someone shines, that's God giving the glory and glory resting back on them. You know, I tell you, the greatest thing you can do in your job, the greatest thing you can do in your marriage, the greatest thing you can do in your family, the greatest thing you can do in your city is you to shine the good deeds that God has called you to, not because of circumstances, not because of reason, but because you know that you, well, the way you're acting, the way you're talking, the good deeds that you're doing, the way you're forgiving, the way you're moving through this life empowered by Jesus is a light that others can see. And it's as they see that light, it's just like the old saying, bugs are attracted by light. They will start following your life down the same life, Jesus said, which is the path to life. Their lives will be, begin to be impacted and changed by simply the, by the way you are empowered and living and choosing to serve Jesus in every situation. All right. Well, I just want to read two more scriptures to you real quick. I want to go quickly to Proverbs. Let me switch like this here. Boom. Boom, boom. All right, I want to bring this one right here up. In Proverbs 4, 18 and 19 says this, The way of the righteous is like the glam of the dawn, which shines over the shines ever brighter into the light of the full day. But the way of the wicked is like total darkness. Yeah, I, don't, I have no idea what they're stumbling over. Man, I tell you, when you get up every day and you make the decision. You get up every day and you make the decision that I'm going to shine a light of living and following Jesus. The Bible says it may start off dim like the light of the first of the day, but it grows brighter and brighter. The power that every time you make that choice, the power of God beginning to flow through you, even though even just by you simply making the decision, You'll begin to get the power to do things and be places that you never even see that. Going back to Matthew, it says this, uh, it says, you know, a light is not hid under a bushel, but it is put up on a stand. I've learned this. The brighter I shine for Jesus, the bigger stands God will put you on. You want to know the secret to promotion in your life, on your job, in your family, in your relationships. The secret to promotion is you shining your light so bright. The Bible says God lifts up one and pulls down another. You watch what stands God's been putting on. You, you know, people in ministry, I'm not getting called to do this. I'm not getting, you, I'm not getting speaking engagements. They're not letting me, um, you know, teach that class. They're not. You start shining 
your light bright, not just being a voice, but being a life that people see, following Jesus at the center of their core, doing everything they can do when they're right, when they're wrong. You know, there is no prophet, the Bible says, when you're done right and you return and do right. But it's when you got the opportunities to not do right is when your light shines the brightest. And your response in those situations, the Bible says, positions you for God to put you up on a stand so the whole world can see. You watch your promotions on your job, in your church, in relationships begin to go up as you shine. Because see, it says the wicked are the ones that go in total darkness and they stumble. They don't see what they're stumbling around. When your light is off, you're in great danger of picking up things that you were never supposed to have in your life. So as Christians, we can't afford to have that light off. Wrong relationships, wrong addictions, wrong things like that. Read one more scripture to you, and then we're going to be done. Let me go back here. Uh, here. Here. And there. All right, there's a scripture. You say, Cricket, what you're asking me to do is tough. What you're asking me to do, I tried. I want to. I want to do all those things, and I just seem to keep failing. Let me ask you this. The people you work with and the people in your family, if you were to ask them who was the greatest light that they knew in their life, would their name be you? And if it's not, then I want you to join with me and pray this prayer right here that we find in Deuteronomy. Because a lot of times I'm not that light in my family or on my job, but I desire to be. Here in Deuteronomy 30, verse 6, it says, The Lord your God will change your heart and the heart of your descendants so that you love will love him with all of your heart, all of your soul, so you may live. If there's ever a prayer that I have to pray, I pray that prayer constantly because I want God to use me in a light, in a, as a light in every situation. He is my light, and so therefore he's created me to be a light. He empowers me to shine in a dark world he's put me in. But the truth of the matter is that if I don't understand that he, I, the great, the brighter the light I shine, the higher the stand he can put me on, then I'll miss out on all that God has for me. So I have to pray this prayer. It says, the Lord your God will change my heart. I pray constantly, God, change my heart in these situations because not only does it affect me, but check it out. That scripture says, and the hearts of my descendants. The way I shine in my life affects the way my children will shine for the Lord in the future. And to me, that's a great, great responsibility. And then it says, so that I will love him with all of my heart and soul, and so I may live. I want to pray that with you right now. Let's just pray that prayer over our lights today. Let's pray, say, Lord, I ask you to change my heart in any area that it is not a pure light for you, in any area that I've held back that I have not chose to make you the center and the power and you the Lord of, ask you right now, Lord, to change that heart. ask you to give me a light that loves you with all of my heart and all of my soul, that I may live the life that you've called me to be, and it will affect my children and my descendants, and you will be able to put me up on a stand to affect and change the world of darkness you have inserted me into on my job, with my friends, in my family. God, I ask you, change my heart and cause me to shine for you. Every day I choose to be your light. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, guys, God bless you. I love you. I thank you for joining with me. Get in the comments. Leave a comment. Tell me which one of the four last four uh, chap challenges or commandments that Jesus gave us has touched you the most. I'm just curious to see. Uh, yeah, I can tell you every one of them have impacted me, I would say, equally, equally at every level. But because uh, I, I guess I would just got so far to go. But hey, leave comments. Tell me how you're enjoying it. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your evening.